And why did we drive a mile from the base to meet this colonel? Security. No one must see him, except us. Here he comes now. Pass on that jacket and stand up straight. Remember, he's a colonel. I don't believe it. Must be some kind of joke. All right, Johnson. Leave this to me. Ah, morning, men. Are we ready for action? Now, listen, son. If this is some sort of prank... I beg your pardon? Oh, Sarge, this has gone far enough. W w w what are you saying? I'm, I'm not a colonel. Now, listen. I think we ought to... I am so too a colonel. Look, look, I have a badge. And as long as I have this badge, I'll be giving the orders around here and, and telling you what to do. All right? Sir, what are we going to do? Right, that's better. Well, one of you, and I don't mind which, is going to be pressing the button on the randomizer today in order to select a random Jerry Anderson episode at random. Oh, but why? That's what I don't understand. Why what? What, you mean, why do I do this? Well, it's because, I mean, it's it's because, um... Well, look, just, just, just less of that lip, Johnson, and a bit more button pressing, please. You'll carry out orders, Johnson. Yes, Sergeant, but I think we're both crazy. Ah, excellent work, Johnson. That's some fine button pressing. So, men, what are we hoping for today? A bit of story. What you love. Well, an admirable goal, Johnson. Let's see if you've come through for us. Oh. Well, it's certainly been a few months since we last heard anything from Fireball XL5. Five, Tim, what's the difference? Well, Fireball XL5 does tend to get the more exciting missions, and they're back today with Dangerous Cargo. Is the episode all keyed up, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Ready to go. Ah, oh, jolly good. Well, you can count me out. Go ahead! Kill yourself! Oh, it can't be that bad, surely. <laughs> So, welcome back to Fireball XL5 on the randomizer, and uh, I don't know about you, but right now, this is exactly the sort of thing I'm in the mood for. A bit of Fireball XL5 with dangerous cargo as we open on what appears to be a uh, an, an abandoned mining facility on a planet somewhere. Ooh, planet Pharos. Siluvium mine opened... Oh, the sign's blown away. One of them mining uh, derricks has collapsed. So it's obviously been abandoned a long time. This is, Steve. Pharos, the derelict planet. Okay, Matt. Is Robert in central control? Yep. Because there's only one. I love that with Fireball XL5. It's always the, the derelict planet, the desert planet, the ice planet. There was only one planet that had, you know, that could be defined by a single characteristic. There was never, like, two of them, or, or more than two. Anyway, off down to the planet. Doesn't look very safe, but I'm sure the XL5 crew are well prepared to uh, to deal with uh, any any problems they might come across here. Oh, the fish is opening up in the ground, like right next to where they landed. So it's quite clear this planet is a death trap, which is why they're all leaving Fireball Junior, just in case it uh, happens to fall into the wide open space that's right next to the ship. What a dismal planet! Everything falling to pieces. It's what we expected, Venus. Remember, the robot miners took every piece of Silivium away from Paris years ago. Yeah, and now the planet is so riddled with mine shafts it could break up at any minute. I don't want to be around when it happens. Say, look, over there. Those flowers. Oh, God. Oh, Venus. Beautiful. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they can stay there. Just yeah. look. Screw you and your flowers, woman. Fall down. Venus, you come with me. Uh, Matt. Do a little exploring and report back in an hour. Okay, Steve. Steve and Venus are heading down into a mine shaft. I'm not sure why this mine shaft is um, worthy of attention, considering they they all agree to the whole planet is about to fall apart. Let's go into the most dangerous and obviously about to collapse place we can find. As I figured, pretty dangerous. Okay, Venus, I've seen enough. Let's get out of here. Okay, Venus, you can get into trouble now. Go off on your own and scream, and I'll come and find you. Oh, they only just got out of there when the place collapsed. Huh? The planet will have to be destroyed, Steve, before it just falls apart. Now, that'll be my recommendation, that's for sure. Come on, let's get back and make out our reports. Well, I suppose that's one planet less in the universe. At least there's no life here to worry about. Hmm. Uh-oh. I never thought when we landed... 
We would meet the cursed Steve Zodiac. Subterranes. They said they are going to return here and destroy this planet. I heard. This is perfect. The planet will not be the only thing to be destroyed. <laughs> uh, two subterranes, the very first villains introduced in Fireball XL5, in fact. I'm not sure what they're doing on the planet. They can start the landing countdown. Right. First time we've seen them on the randomizer, too, I believe. I think they made uh, four appearances in the series. Hope he hasn't caused Commander Zero too much trouble. This isn't an episode I remember too well. I think this was one of the very last, if not the last, episode to be released on uh, on VHS back in the 90s. And uh, this wasn't a tape I had. Zuni is, would you, sir? Lieutenant, I had to get this on the tape trading network later on. I haven't seen him all day. He's probably asleep somewhere. I hope. So, Zuni has been allowed to wander off by himself. Where's he going to go? Well, main power plant looks like a good place to play. And of course, the door is not kept locked. There's no password or security card needed. He can just go in there and start jumping on things. And make the tower spin round really fast. Oh, that's this episode, right. It's one of those things, I suppose, having built the model to spin, they must have been... Just stand there, Lieutenant! Do something! ...tempted to, uh, to make it spin out of control at some point, but uh, even so, I mean, I don't know how many people work in that Space City Tower. It must be quite a few. And Zuni has once again proved... Report, Lieutenant. Just let me get my hands on whoever caused this. He's a complete liability. Oh, look at the mess. Oh, I wouldn't like to be in your shoes, laddie, when the commander hears about this. You stupid, idiotic creature. That's it, go for it. Oh, Zuni's hiding behind Venus. Come back here when I'm shouting at you! Oh, but, dear. But he didn't mean it, Commander. You keep out of this, Venus. Why, I ought to take you and fire you into space. Unexplored space. So you couldn't get up to your mischief, you overgrown, half-baked son of a... Oh, make him stop, Steve. No, Venus, this time Zuni's got to be punished. He's got to learn sometime. And I'm quite interested in this firing him into space thing, Venus. I see him anymore. Oh Come on, Zuni. So yes, that's the subplot for this episode. Um, what on earth are they going to do with Zuni while they're away? So we can get some work done. Okay, come on. Which is an interesting thing if this wasn't like episode. Well, this is episode twenty-seven in broadcast order. Why is this only now a problem? What to do with Zuni when they go away? Considering that Zuni very rarely accompanies them on the ship. Like three quarters of the missions we've seen them do, they leave Zuni on Earth. So who's looking after him then? Well, gentlemen, I agree with you. It'll have to be destroyed. Anyway, Commander Zero's all on board with the plan to destroy the planet. The planet in its present condition, missiles would only break it up. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's very close to the freighter routes. If it broke up, it'd take years to clear it away. Then it'll have to be complete disintegration. You can use Vesivium 9. Vesivium? Vesivium 9? Oh, what's the matter, Professor? Why, that's the greatest explosive force in the universe! Exactly. I love that none of them have actually sort of... None of them feel slightly guilty for being at least partly responsible for overmining the planet to the point where it has to be destroyed. It's just like, no, planets are there to be exploited, all their resources taken, and then we destroy them, as is our want. For we are gods among the universe, and we decide which planets live and die. And this is a lovely shot as well. This um, Vesuvium 9 crate being taken out to the XL5 launch ramp. This... Yeah, the models here look a bit more... Uh, a bit more detailed than probably I'd expect to uh, to see from Fireball XL5. I'm also looking at the... Uh, the um, sure what you'd call it, tractor thing on the front of the, uh, or that, that, that's brought the crate out to XL5. It looks very familiar. Um, I think it must have appeared in later productions. Dave, if they make you leave Space City, I won't be able to stop them. Oh. Oh, that's on the cards, is it? Oh. And I just couldn't bear to lose you, Zuni. Oh, dear. Please let Zuni come with us. What? You can't be so tooty as to want him around with our cargo. Oh, but... But he wouldn't be any troubles, Steve. <laughs> please. Please, Steve. 
Hmm. I can't leave him with the commander, you know that. And there's literally nobody else in Space City at all. And I'll tell you something else, you can't bring him aboard Fireball either. Oh, oh you, you beast. <laughs> Okay. I guess it won't hurt to have two beasts aboard Fireball. Oh, okay, God, Steve. But on my That's probably uh, Venus's most pathetic moment. And there are quite a few. Ah, oh, so Zuni has now been locked in the XL5 space jail. Oh, and he does not look happy about it at all. All stations, stand by. Clear space routes. XL5 priority liftoff. Oh, that was an unusual uh, shot of the XL5 launch motors kicking in there. Now we're off to the uh, the standard launch sequence. Absolutely gorgeous. XL5, you're gonna need it. Maintain course, Robert. Maintain course. Can I go and see Zuni, Steve? Okay, just so long as you don't let him out. I'll go to the nav bay and see how Matt's making out. She probably just lock Venus in the space jail with him. She's probably going to be uh, just as little use as he is. Help together, Matthew Maddock. No time to go all the pieces. Yeah, they've just dumped the explosives in the navigation bay with Matt. Welcome home. In a big crate. Um, and of course, this this ship has never run into any unexpected uh, turbulence that could perhaps set the uh, the explosives off. God. Uh, see, uh, not so much noise. Take it it's good that we've got our best people on this mission. We've got the uh, the crybaby who insists on bringing her uncontrollable space monkey along, and we've got uh, don't move. the panickiest What's professor. You're wearing a ray gun. <laughs> There's no danger. The capsule in that ray gun it, it could explode. Only when it's taken out. Honestly, Matt, I wish you'd calm down. So now I'm wondering what, what those subterranes were doing here. Have they been left behind deliberately, just on the off chance that some human explorers might happen along? Or do they have some other sinister plan? Welcome back, oh, Colonel Zodiac. <laughs> We've been standing on this one exact spot since you left. First... We'll see how they intend to blow up the planet. Yeah. We might find a way to keep them on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get this unloaded. Uh, where are you going to put it, Steve? I found just the place on my last trip here. One of the old mine shafts. XL5 calling Space City. Colonel Zodiac reporting. Zero hour for explosion, 1600 hours. Message understood. I will divert all space freight. Roger. Over and out. Steve, can I let Zuni out now? Well, I guess Shut up! Okay. But under no circumstances is he to leave the ship. He's supposed to be a professional, isn't she? I mean, that's not just something I've invented. Oh, we must wait for Steve Zodiac and the beautiful Earth woman. <laughs> and then... Oh. Yes, that was a line the subterranes used in, in their first appearance, Planet 4-6. The beautiful Earth woman. They had a bit of a thing for Venus. And the way she's been behaving this week, I think they're welcome to her. Bad at all. Now, Zuni, you must stay with Robert. What? And please, please be good. <laughs> yes, they're leaving their space monkey, who has repeatedly proven he cannot be trusted. I think I'll have time to get some of those lovely flowers. Oh, stop it. They've left Zuni in the cockpit of XL5 with Robert. Because... That's not a situation that could backfire, and indeed has backfired on them before. Set it for one hour from now. That should where, where do the XL5 crew keep their brains? Because it's clearly not in their heads. Oh, there's some okay. serious evil chuckling from the subterranes there. They're about to lever a great big rock onto the entrance to the shaft. There it goes. What's happened, Steve? There seems to have been some kind of rockfall. The entrance is blocked. Oh, Steve, what do we do? And what about Zuni? Come, let us leave while there is still time. Back to our spaceship. Why did we even come to this planet in the first place? 
I still don't understand why. There's not much time, Steve. And I think that's it for the subterrains this episode. So, um, be a way out. There yeah, and their other three appearances, they were far more uh, integral part of the story. This time, they're um, well, that's the halfway point, I think, and uh, they've already left. XL5 crew trapped down a hole. Space City calling XL5. Space City calling XL5. So it's just the robot and the space monkey aboard. And the planet is still disintegrating around XL5. By the look of this place, we won't have to wait for the bomb. We'll be buried alive. Well, you know, there's, there's, there's points on both sides here. Stop this thing, Matt. Not a chance. It's set to go off at 1,600 hours. If I touch it, it'll explode immediately. Oh, Steve, I'm scared. And poor little Zuni and Robert. Well, yeah, Robert. Okay, yeah, I sympathize with Robert, but Zuni, no. That's it. That could be the answer. What do you mean, Steve? I don't understand. Robert is our robot. Jim here on the jetmobile. Oh, I did not know this, Steve. Robert, Robert, listen carefully. You are to collect a thruster pack and leave the XL5. Collect a thruster pack and leave XL5. Take a UHF radio with you and await further instructions. Let's hope it works, Steve. Yeah. You take a jetmobile up to the opening mat and listen for Robert. Leave the XL5. Good riddance to Space Monkey. I think Zuni might actually have helped Robert put his uh, thruster pack on back there. That's quite sweet. Anyway, Zuni is now all alone aboard XL5. Robert's coming to save the day as the, I think, only competent member of the XL5 crew this week. Indeed, most weeks, but Zuni is following him out the ejector tube. Robert, you are now to proceed in the following direction. Steer 1890 white. Really like actually the design of Robert. I'd be interested to see some more photos of him in colour. Um, to see how he looks with the the electronic eyes flashing with his dialogue. Obviously, it's 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 Jerry's voice which makes the character more more notable. But it's a really nice design. Move the rocks. Move the rocks. And I also like that the character is you know, pretty much iconic for this show. But he he doesn't really have a character as such. And we saw just there as he got off XL5 because that was all he'd been told to do. He didn't do anything else. He's now trying to move this rock off the... Uh... It's no use. It's like asking a man to move a mountain. Oh, he's not doing too bad. Return to XL5. Oh. But Steve, Robert, he was our last chance. Well, there is always Zuni, Venus. They've got to leave that place by 1530, Lieutenant. Otherwise, Fireball won't get clear of the explosion. Yes, sir. Boy, if they get out of this, I'll even forgive Zuni. Oh, those flowers are back. Calling XL5. Calling XL5. Why is Robert not answering when Earth calls? Is he only programmed to, to answer the XL5 crew? Hey, Steve, you're still wearing your Riga. I'm sure that's not consistent with previous episodes. But the capsule in it is highly explosive. Only when it's taken out of the gun. Hey, of course, you're right, man. I could blow us all up now and save the bomb the time. Be careful, Steve. Those atomic capsules can explode as soon as you touch them. Well, in our situation, we've got nothing to lose. Again, I, I'm still thinking of the, the subterrain's involvement with this episode because they need... they almost need not have come for this. It's like the rock could have just fallen on the hole by accident. The planet is falling apart anyway. So... This seems like a really minor appearance for them. I'd still love to know why they were on this planet in the first place. They didn't seem to be doing anything. And as I said, when the XL5 crew left, went back to Earth and then returned, they were still standing in exactly the same spot. Anyway, I mustn't grumble about the subterrains because they're already long gone. Come on, explode! Oh, I'm doing my best, Steve. That's got it. Oh, the great big 
wire attached to the rock might also have helped there, as it's blown it clear of the entrance. You've done it! Hooray! That's it. We've not got long to spare, but XL5 is uh, underway. One minute. Steve, I can't find Zuni anywhere. Don't worry, Venus. He must be on board somewhere. But he isn't. Well, he certainly couldn't have got out. Unless... Unless we left the door open. Oh, Steve! He must still be on the planet. Oh, well, acceptable losses, Venus. Steve. How can we? There's only ten seconds left. The bomb almost looks like it has a face as well. Oh, that's it. Planet gone. Big old explosion. Zuni! Oh, Zuni! And Zuni is no more. Clearly very dead. They certainly wouldn't fake us out that Zuni is dead. Zuni was on the planet. Of course I heard. Take over, Lieutenant. <coughs> and to think how mean I was to that poor little Lejeune. Oh, I love Commander Zero, despite the fact that this is all, all clearly just one big fake out. I do love the... Uh, the slightly more sensitive side to Commander Zero at times like this. We're sorry as you are. We I'm sorry he ever came on board. I mean, I'm glad he's dead. All right, kid. Oh, but guess what? I bet you can't guess what. Voice. I feel as if he's right here in the room with me. Oh, no, that's his stink. Ah, uh, he went to pick the flowers that Venus admired earlier. Oh, Zuni, one of those beautiful flowers. You picked it for me. Welcome home! So, Zuni survives to irritate us all another day, and that was Dangerous Cargo, which was a, a bit of a mixed bag there. I, I think on the whole I, I would have to say I enjoyed that one, despite the... Well, firstly, the minimal use of the subtrains that was rather disappointing for their first outing on the randomizer, but no doubt we'll see better from them whenever they next turn up. Also, just um, an episode focusing a bit too much on Zuni, maybe. I, I don't think the uh, the Anderson shows really benefited from having an, an animal sidekick around, and uh, this episode is is probably a good example of why it just didn't work because the character is so. Clearly irritating, clearly useless, clearly does not belong on any any military base or installation whatsoever because he's so destructive and terrible. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe as, as a kid, uh, Zuni appealed to you. He certainly didn't appeal to me. So, uh, yeah, on the whole, a mixed bag of Fireball XL5 goodness there, but uh, still pretty enjoyable, as most episodes so far have been. Yeah.